Moe's Tavern, Moe speaking. Hi, I was hoping you could tell me what state Springfield is in? Listen, you. When I get a hold of you, I'm gonna use your head for a bucket and paint my house with your brain. Well, that escalated quickly. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, the show that proves you can turn watching Netflix reruns into a job. And while reruns are the only way to enjoy most of our favorite shows from the 90s, unless, you know, someone's eager for a quick cash grab based on brand awareness, there's one show that is hung on. The Simpsons came out in a simpler time, a time when cell phones were the size of bricks and the word fleek hadn't earned itself a place in the dictionary. Speaking of the dictionary, though, Homer's catchphrase of dough was actually added a few years ago, and it's where the common usage of the word meh comes from. Crazy, right? From the quickie mart to the prototype of internet trolls, The Simpsons is truly a cultural icon. And yet, after nearly three decades, one huge mystery about the series remains unanswered. Where do The Simpsons live. We all know they live in Springfield, that part's obvious, but the state has always been a question. And this isn't by accident. The show has taunted viewers for years by giving information that would make it virtually impossible for anyone to determine exactly where Springfield is. Notice, though, that I said virtually impossible, because after sifting through the evidence, there is more than enough proof to deduce where the Simpsons actually reside. Today, we're closing the books on one of Primetime's longest-running riddles. Now hold on to your comment hand, all you walking Simpsons encyclopedias. I'm sure you're just waiting to point out that there are tons of jokes and references in The Simpsons that contradict each other. What about that time in The Simpsons movie, for instance, when Flanders says that the four states that border Springfield are Ohio, Nevada, Maine, and Kentucky. No such state does or ever could exist. Well, stupid sexy Flanders, that's a fair point. But here's the thing, the running jokes about where Springfield is are mostly there to throw off would-be theorists. So if we want to determine where Springfield really is, we need to look for evidence that's given when the show isn't joking about the impossibility of its location. Preference also goes to episodes that are older, both because they're less likely to present Springfield as a place that couldn't exist, and because many diehard Simpsons fans consider episodes after season 9 to be non-canonical because the show changed executive producers. Got all that? Good, because we have a mystery to solve. <laughs> Since The Simpsons takes so much pride in never revealing its big mystery... <laughs> Our best tactic to prove where Springfield is is to work backwards and eliminate where it isn't. 50 states is a lot to cover, so let's knock out a bunch right off the bat. In season 5, Bart wins a call-in contest at Springfield's local radio station and gets to choose between a grand prize of $10,000 or an elephant. Bart picks the elephant, hijinks ensues, and Homer gets stuck in the La Brea tar pit. So what's this have to do with Springfield's location? Well, the radio station Bart calls is named KBBL, and it's referenced in a number of other Simpsons episodes from the first several seasons. So we can say that it is indeed a permanent fixture in Springfield and not just some one-off joke a random writer came up with. Why does this matter? Well, in the early 1920s, the Federal Communications Commission established a system for radio station call letters. All states east of the Mississippi River would have call letters that started with W, like NBC's New York radio station WNYC. And stations west of the mighty Mississippi would start with the letter K. Springfield's KBBL thus could not be in any of the 26 states that are completely completely east of the Mississippi River. Minnesota and Louisiana are the exceptions, with stations that start with both K and W, so they'll stay for now. But still, there goes half the country in one fell swoop. How has no one figured this out yet? Seriously, people, do your research. Then again, maybe I've spoken too soon, because from here it gets a lot trickier. We get some good geographical clues from the season 7 episode, Bart on the Road. Bart manages to get a fake ID, rents a car for spring break, and ends up getting himself and his friends stranded in Knoxville, Tennessee. On the road from spring Springfield to Knoxville, the group drives through Branson, Missouri, stopping to listen to the smooth crooning of Andy Williams. And if you're wondering who Andy Williams is, don't worry. People watching that episode at the time it was aired probably didn't know who Andy Williams was. Such a random old reference. Anyway, let's take a look at the map. Branson is in the southwest corner of Missouri, and Knoxville is in eastern Tennessee. Bart would have had to take a pretty major detour to get to Branson if their point of origin was in Louisiana, Arkansas, or Texas, so we can eliminate all of those. And unless the 
the rental car is one of those duck boats that goes from water to land. They ain't driving to Tennessee from Hawaii. No big surprise, Hawaii's off the table. In the same episode, we see a map of all the nuclear reactors in the United States above Homer's workstation. When the camera zooms in, we can see California, Nevada, and Utah completely, and none of their reactors are labeled Springfield. Another three states bite the dust. Now we need to think about the topography of Springfield. We know that Springfield has mountains from episodes like Mountain of Madness, Mr. Plow, and King of the Hill. Not to be confused with uh, this one. Damn it, Bobby! Sorry, I swear my New Year's resolution is to stop doing impressions. In the Simpsons episode, King of the Hill, Homer gets in shape and is hired by a protein bar company to climb the Murder Horn, the tallest mountain in Springfield. In one scene, we see Homer sucking on oxygen tanks, which his guides packed to prevent altitude sickness. According to WebMD, altitude sickness is extremely rare below 8,000 feet above sea level. Minnesota, Iowa, Missouri, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, and Oklahoma all have highest points that are shorter than that 8,000 foot mark. 2.4 kilometer mark. So they're all out. That means we're down to our final nine. Alaska, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. This isn't a surprise, but it's definitely not Alaska. In the Simpsons movie, the entire family uproots from Springfield and moves to Alaska. We even see them entering the state for the first time, so Alaska is out. We've got a couple of clues that help us eliminate some southwestern states as well. In the season five episode, Boy Scouts in the hood, clearly I live the thug life myself, Bart and his junior camper troop get lost when they go whitewater rafting. Homer tries to navigate using a map of Krusty Burger locations and says the following. Hey, there's a New Mexico. And in the process, knocks the state out of the running. Now let's jump ahead two seasons to season seven's King Size Homer. In it, Homer gets to his desk at 8.58 in the morning, remarking that it's the first time he's ever been early for work, quote, except for all those daylight savings days. This eliminates Arizona because it's the only state in the lower 48 that doesn't observe daylight savings time. Geez, Arizona, way to be different. At least it's simpler than Australia's daylight savings time system. I mean, seriously, did you know about this? They have half hour time zones and the continent is divided in two. How does this make any sense? Anyway, another big geographic clue is Springfield's proximity to water. Besides the fact that one of Springfield's odd residents is a grizzled old sea captain, we see in numerous episodes that Springfield is near the ocean. Homer and Marge take a romantic walk on the beach in And Maggie Makes Three from season six. Bart and Lisa track down Krusty the Clown disguised as a longshoreman in Bart the Fink. And Marge and Homer reunite and declare themselves soulmates at a lighthouse in El Vieje. El Vieje. El Vieje Misterioso de Nuestro Homer. Yeah, that's an episode that appeared in season eight. While we don't have a solid indication that Springfield is a beach town necessarily, it's safe to say that it must be a short distance from the coast. As a result, all remaining landlocked states are out. Sayonara to Idaho, Montana, Colorado, and Wyoming. And that, my friends, leaves us with two, Washington State and Oregon. These two states are really similar. Their geography, climate, topography, and demographics are pretty close to identical, but there's an incredibly minor detail that helps us eliminate Springfield from one of them. And it's so small that I can guarantee that even the most hardcore of Simpsons aficionados might have missed it. Which one is it? Place your bets in the comments now and then let me know if you won. Ready? In the season seven episode, Much A Poo About Nothing, a bear wanders into Springfield, leading an angry mob to demand protection from the bears. Mayor Quimby establishes a bear patrol. And when Homer next opens his paycheck, he's outraged to see a $5 tax for this new government service. But if we zoom in on that paycheck, on the left side, three rows down, the paycheck indicates that $10.45 were withheld by state tax. Why does this matter? Because there are nine states in the U.S. with no state level income tax. Alaska, Florida, Nevada, New Hampshire, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Wyoming, and last but not least... Washington State. I caramba, we have ourselves a winner. The Simpsons' hometown is Springfield, Oregon. Now, admittedly, no single small town could have every single feature that the Simpsons have ascribed to the fictional Springfield over the years, but geographically and based on clues hidden throughout the series, Oregon is indeed the best fit. With a little bit of everything. Coastline, forests, deserts, tall mountains, and gorges. Oh man, I'm starting to feel like the Oregon Board of Tourism. Oregon more than just a trail.
But if you're still having a cow over the results, there's one more piece of evidence to consider, and it comes from the creator of the series himself. Matt Groening. Some diehard Simpsons fans might remember that before The Simpsons was its own show, it was a series of short cartoons on the Tracy Ullman show. Matt Groening was a cartoonist whose most popular cartoon at the time, Life in Hell, had caught the attention of the makers of that show, who then asked him to pitch cartoons for the series. Groening wanted to make sure that he would retain all ownership over Life in Hell, so he pitched a cartoon to the Tracy Ullman show on the fly. As he improved his way through this pitch, he named the patriarch after his own father, Homer, and he said that the family would live on Evergreen Terrace, the same street that he grew up on as a child. Want to guess where Matt Groening is from? Yep, Portland, Oregon. In an interview with Smithsonian Magazine, Groening said that he initially wanted to name each character after a street from Portland, and for a while he succeeded, turning Portland's Flanders Street, Lovejoy Street, and Quimby Street into recurring characters on the series. And the real-life Springfield, Oregon is just a short trip south on Interstate 5, from Portland. Even though The Simpsons Springfield is meant to be an anonymous all-American city, it's been set in Oregon from the very first pitch. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. So that's pretty awesome, but admittedly, I'm not the first Simpsons theorist out there. In fact, did you know that a lot of the Simpsons writing team have advanced degrees in math and physics? It's true. One author, Simon Singh, actually tracked all the mathematical references in the show to uncover the surprising truth that the Simpsons slowly introduces number theory into the minds of its viewers. No joke. And if you're interested, it's worth mentioning that the book is available to download on Audible.com. Audible has been a regular sponsor for us, this video included, and for good reason. It's a service I believe in. For instance, I myself didn't have time to read Simon's book, but I did have time to listen to it, in the car, chapter by chapter, driving between meetings. And it was fantastic. I highly recommend you check it out. But I wouldn't know that without the service. I'm currently listening to The Gospel According to the Simpsons, which looks at how the Simpsons treat religion. It's pretty cool stuff. And Audible makes quote-unquote reading more books much more possible in my everyday life. And if you want something other than deep analysis of cartoons, I don't know why you would, but maybe you do. For you, Audible has over 180,000 books available to download and listen to. And if you want to check it out, you can have a 30-day free trial by going to audible.com slash or clicking the link in the description for this video. Seriously, they have something for everyone. And if you value reading but don't have time to sit down with a book, it's perfect for your lifestyle. So support them, and in turn, support our ability to do more videos for you. And you do that by simply getting your 30-day free trial by going to audible.com slash filmt. That's audible.com slash f-i-l-m-t. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to find some books about Inception. Maybe someone out there knows what that movie was all about. But the state has always been a question. And this isn't by accident. The show has taunted viewers for years by giving information that would make it virtually impossible for anyone to determine exactly where Springfield is. Notice, though, that I said virtually impossible. Because after sifting through the evidence, there is more than enough proof to deduce where the for a quick cash grab based on brand awareness. There's one show that is hung on. The Simpsons came out in a simpler time, a time when cell phones were the size of bricks and the word fleek hadn't earned itself a place in the dictionary. Speaking of the dictionary, though, Homer's catchphrase of dough was actually added a few years ago, and it's where the com- most tavern, most speaking. Hi, I was hoping you could tell me what state Springfield is in? Listen, you. When I get a hold of you, I'm gonna use your head for a bucket and paint my house with your brain. Well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> usage of the word meh comes from. Crazy, right? From the quickie mart to the prototype of internet trolls, The Simpsons is truly a cultural icon. And yet, after nearly three decades, one huge mystery about the series remains unanswered. Where do The Simpsons live? We all know they live in Springfield, that part's obvious. <laughs> Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, the show that proves you can turn watching Netflix reruns into a job. And while reruns are the only way to enjoy most of our favorite shows from the 90s, unless, you know, someone's eager for-